one of the biggest controversies of the games. Welcome to another episode of Fun and Games, your weekly look into the big games come up, of course. Just around the corner. It seems like only days away, Robbo. It is Rio. Mate, uh, massive week as well. Oh, look, so much to get through, Mossy. The Hain Plains taken off. Uh, it's been a great day over there for Jason Day in the States. But, mate, it's all about the athletics this week and the world champs coming up from the bird's nest in Beijing. Usain Bolt will be there. Mo Farah will be there. The cream of athletics from right around the world will be there. One fella that won't be there is this guy. What are you doing? Slow. You're going to die out, bro. Too fast. Oh! Well, there you go, Robbo. I'll tell you what, though, massive amount of news, as we've said. Why don't we uh, throw this one over to Cal? Thanks, boys, and welcome to the Fun and Games news desk this week. And, yes, it's all about the basketball. Get your slam dunks, get your pick and rolls, get your triple doubles, every term you can possibly think of. You're going to need them in 12 months' time because, yes, the Aussies have qualified in both the men and the women's competition. The Boomers and the Apples are through to Brazil next year after beating the Kiwis during the weekend. I'm a little bit coarse because I've been cheering for them, not only them, but the other Aussies beating the Kiwis over the weekend. It was fantastic to see the diamond sparkling on the netball scene, winning that World Cup at home in Sydney. And, of course, who could forget Jason's day over in the Gulf. I'm not sure what Kiwis were in there, but if not, I'm sure he beat them. There's no doubt about that. In other news, we've got... The in charge now of the IAAF, the head honcho is Seb Coe, a two-time gold medalist in the athletics field. He was the head honcho behind the London 2012 Olympic Games, and he's now overseeing the athletics world and, of course, those world championships in Beijing next week. And to finish off, a little bit of a sweetener, boys. We've got uh, Cadbury coming on board in partnership with the AOC and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they feed our little Vegemites over there in South America next year with that chocolate twist. And, uh, boys, it's going to be interesting to see how you guys uh, tackle the challenge as well with a little bit of sweet chocolate and a little bit of Vegemite, Vegemite delight. Good luck, boys. Well, Robbo, lots of ball action this week, mate. Uh, we start over with the basketball, and it was the Boomers and also the Opals. Yes, taking on the Kiwis, and I love the names, Mossy. I uh, can't get enough of it. The Tall Ferns and, uh, and the Opals, and then the Tall Blacks, the Kiwis male basketball team. But the Opals, they booked their ticket, Mossy, straight away. Uh, they're on the plane to Rio. Big uh, crowd too, mate. Oh, huge, huge. Yeah. Well, They're just... talking about the biggest crowd since Bathurst High took on Lithgow High. <laughs> oh, that... And, uh, and the Sydney Olympics also, I think, just underneath that. But, um, yeah, it was great to see the homecoming, they called it, down there at Rod Laver Arena. That was leg one. And then they went over to New Zealand for leg two. The crowds weren't quite as big over there, but the Opals got the job done. And then the Boomers, great to see with all their NBA stars, Paddy Mills, uh, Andrew Bogut, Matthew v Della Vadova, Delhi, he was there as well. The one I, that caught my eye, Mossy, is uh, the Man Mountain, uh, Nate J.Y., He's called the Outback Shack, and you can see him here with Paddy Mills. A couple of legends here, and instead of the, they've had the Dream Team. I want to call these guys the Dream Time Team. Ah, oh, nice. The Aussies there leading the way. So great work from the Boomers. The thing, Mossy, that the other, I guess, aspiring Olympians are concerned about is all the uh, extra legroom seats on the plane to Rio are now taken up by the tall timber of these basketballs. So anyway, up the back uh, with all the athletes, I guess, uh, from the athletics. But mate, great work, and uh, yeah. I want to see those guys do well in Rio and possibly pick up their first medals. And uh, the women, they can go for gold because, as Cal said, they haven't done that yet. Can't wait to see how they go in a year's time. Speaking of going for gold, mate, our chef de mission, Kitty Chilo, who is a modern pentathlete. Uh, mate, we sent her on the plane over there to Rio just to suss the joint out. We did, and we spoke about the water quality last week. We wanted her to test that out as well as have a look at what the uh, progress is like with the venues, with the Athletes Village, and she's over there in the mix. Uh, she's also been um, out there mixing it with the other ma the chefs, all right, the chef de missions, and that's what they've been having, the chef de mission seminar. I'm calling it Master Chef. Oh, nice. And uh, each of them take it in turn each night to cook up a different meal. I think Kitty's pulled off a beautiful pavlova, and, and that's been the talk of the village. But uh, great work by all the chefs over there. The other thing she was able to do was meet in person Vinny, uh, Vinicius, the uh, the Olympic mascot, and she even got to have a little dance with Vinny as well. And yeah, great work, Kitty and Vinny. 
Great to see them hitting it off uh, at their first meeting. Speaking of days, Robert, on Sunday it was Jason's day. He uh, finally got himself the duck off the back, mate. Uh, Brides made far too many times and he's now got himself a big uh, ticket item. Yes, he does, mate. The US PGA Championship, uh, he put on Twitter, ding dong, the witch is dead and wasn't it great to see. I'm calling August the 16th. Jason Day Day. I think we need to celebrate that every year from this point on. And uh, look, it was fantastic. It's an Olympic sport. Let's not forget this year, Mossy. And so uh, Jason Day, he is a realistic medal contender, you'd have to say at this point. A beautiful day. Uh, what about his young fella, Dash Day? Uh, great to see him in the action, uh, running around, kissing the trophy. Uh, great name, and I don't know whether he's a potential 100-metre uh, sprinter or, or no, what mate, he's, no, he's no. for. He, he's good enough for, for the lawn bowls uh, uh, in yeah. Newcastle 2030, so Perfect. watch out for that one there, Dash Day. Now, Seb Coe, huge announcement today. We've been following Seb Coe in his bid for the IAAF presidency. It's been far overdue, and, uh, mate, uh, how did it go today? Yeah, well, the scores have come through. It was Sebco versus Sergei Bubka. What a showdown and, uh, this has been, mate. It has been the whole way along. And, look, it's, it's looked up, ended up looking like a basketball score here. Seb's done it pretty well. He's, he's run away with it in the fourth quarter. 115 votes to 92. So he's done it convincingly. And I know a lot of people are very happy with that. How, what's your take on it, Mossy? Oh, mate, it's great news. I mean, we know that he was a great runner, the 800s, the 1500s, the gold medals across the Olympics. And London, also, London Olympics, the man behind he, that. He made that happen, didn't he? So, yeah. Lord of the Rings, as I like to call him, Seb, there, and it was uh, definitely the choice uh, that we had to go for. Uh, mate, speaking of that, World Championships. Yes. Well, they're not too far away. Beijing, uh, athletics, it's going to be all happening, mate. The Aussie tilt is over there with the uh, the Australian flame. Yes, and I expect them to have a flaming good time over there, Mossy. And uh, I just want to give you a few little athletes to look out for in the run, jump, the chuck and the walks. In the runs, Madeline Heiner, she's a name that you need to keep an eye on very closely. She's not doing uh, just one event, her 3,000 metre steeplechase. She's backing up for the 5,000 metres as well. And I reckon she's a big show for finals, if not medals as well. Very Seb Co-like. Very Seb Co, the 800, the 1500. Well, yes, and she's, uh, she's good at jumping over the, the steeples and the water jumps. She's, uh, she's been smashing it this year, so watch out for Maddie Heiner. In the jumps, mate, uh, Brandon Stark, brother of Mitchell Stark. And the two of them, uh, they compete every day. They, they try and have the Stark of the Day award. And Mum and Dad, uh, Mr and Mrs Stark, they have to decide. And... Some days it's Mitchell, some days it's Brandon. Well, hopefully it's going to be Brandon today very shortly. He's been jumping well. 227, he cleared recently uh, in a lead-up meet in Japan. So let's hope Brandon Stark can get the job done over there in Beijing. What about the Chucks, Mossy and Kim Mickle? Aussie Kim, one of the special Ks, the three Ks of ja women's javelin throwing. She's, uh, she's threatening big time. She's, she hasn't finished off the podium in the Diamond League this year. She's looking red hot for a medal. Mate, and let's not forget over there in Glasgow Commonwealth Games with her great post-gold uh, medal victory with the... I'm bloody real. <laughs> she is Australian, <laughs> true and fantastic. true, mate. Yeah. Yes. What about the Waddlers? Oh, look, the, uh, I'm, I'm calling these guys the Flaming Hips, the Walkers. And uh, it's just disguised running, isn't it, Mossy? But these guys seem to do it well. And Jared Talent, he's been a medalist uh, on the world stage previously, and I expect him to walk away from Beijing with a gold medal dangling around his neck. Uh, we've got a good, strong team of walkers over there, so can't wait to see how that goes, mate. And I reckon we'll do pretty well, the old flame. Now, speaking of how well it goes, mate, this is the, the biggest news of the week. We know it's been very, very hard to choose, and there's been arm wrestles, there's been all sorts of uh, legal issues going on. I'm talking about the official chocolate supplier to the Australian Olympic team, and it has been announced, and I'm happy, if you don't know, it's Cadbury's. Yes, and look, it wasn't until this week, Mossy, that I realised that there was an official chocolate supplier for the Australian Olympic team. Um, look, I've had mixed reports about this, Mossy. People are saying it's a bad image for the sport, for the AOC in general. I'm potentially uh, blown away by what it's going to do with getting kids off the couch. You think of all the little fat kids that are out there that love their chocolate, how inspired they will be to now get over to Rio and make that Olympic dream come true. Just when to they get the they can get, a, they can get a bag full of this stuff um, to get them over there as a reward. A year supply, or oh, is it an endless uh, rest of your life, you get Cadbury's. Why not? So. This is a chiller thing. Kitty chiller. She's oh, coming yes. and she's Dangle said. the carrot or the yep. Cadbury's. Get the kids involved. Modern pentathlons where most of the chocolate's being allocated, <laughs> I, I hear. Um, but uh, look, well done, Cadbury's. Well done, AOC. And let's see... How it goes, and how's that chocolate going? Yeah, it's going pretty well now. It's actually pretzel chocolate. Is it's it? Make, making, making me thirsty. Very good, mate. Bit of late mail. Yes.
Late mail here. Now, we've got our first fan mail, Mossy, and this is very exciting. It comes in from modern pentathlete Chloe Esposito. She's been a guest on the show. Uh, she says, hi, guys. Loving the show. Keep up the good work. Now, we have the Dolphins, the Sharks, the Wallabies, Socceroos, Opals, Diamonds. We need a nickname for the pentathletes. Now, Mossy, I know you're pretty good at your uh, team names, mate, and Australia is generally pretty good. We saw New Zealand's good with it as well. Have you given any thought to what we can call the modern pentathlon team when we send them over to Rio? No, mate. The only thing I'm thinking about at the moment is renaming the sport. Modern pentathlon. I'd, what's this whole modern thing? I understand the pentathlon thing, but that's where I'm going to focus my efforts on, mate. So what about yourself? <laughs> well, I'm thinking... If there's a modern, surely there's an ancient. And ancient to me, ancient and Olympics is all about taking your clothes, clothes off. off. Yes. So let's bring back the ancient pentathlon and do the five disciplines in the nude with the Cadbury's chocolate. Uh, and who knows what we'll come. We haven't come any done any be any better with coming up with That's a team name. I don't mind the starfish. Five points to the starfish. Um, <laughs> I don't know where, where that's going, but, uh, mate, we'll come up with your suggestions. We'll have a think about it this week. We'll get back to you soon, Chloe. If anyone out there on social media has got any ideas, uh, please send it through, at Mossy and Robbo, and we'll do our best to come up with a team name. But we've got some absolute pearlers for some of the other teams, and we'll reveal those in, in future episodes of Fun and Games. And we know that Kitty Chiller, the chef to Michonne, one of the greatest modern pentathletes of all time, is a great starfish indeed. Now, Robbo, it's all fun and games until... You go for a swim in the water, jump. What are you doing? Too slow. You're going to die out, bro. Too fast.